Now let's take a look at how I would start to add color and tone to my artwork using colored pencil. The first thing I need is this, my tonal plan. It's like a road map and I'm going to have that beside me while I work. I'm going to work on this top section. Now notice on my tonal plan that I've emphasized mainly just the super dark tones on the horses. That's my positive shape. There is a few middle tones, but I was primarily concerned with the placement of the dark tones. And what they're doing is they're helping to create a path throughout the artwork, leading the viewer's eye through the artwork. And then in the negative shape, you see that I have established some middle tones or middle to dark tones. So I'm going to start with just one color. I'm going to use the red. I have my tonal plan beside me. And I'll start here. Now, look, in the tonal plan, that's a really dark tone. But, just like with watercolor, I'm not going to go too dark in the beginning because I'm layering. I noticed that there's a bit of a middle tone right here. So I will kind of put that in. Now look, I'm actually working into the light tone area now too, but I'm barely pressing. So in other words, I don't want to leave it white. This is really light down here, but I don't want to leave it white. So I did add some tone there, some pigment. I'm hoping that when I'm finished, my pencil won't be obvious. Maybe what I should have done is taken a kneadable eraser and just lightened it up first. So you might want to do that. If your drawing is really dark, drag an eraser over it before you start adding your colored pencil. You can always go darker, but you can't really go lighter. You can't really erase colored pencil. I mean, you could try, but eh, it might just end up making a bit of a mess. So that's why you can see here that in some cases I'm, I'm doing the light tone first and then going back and doing the dark tone. I know that this shape up here is going to be pretty dark. See? So, I'm being fairly aggressive. Colored pencil is like painting, but it's a drawing media too. And so, you can be really careful with it. I'm using only one color, so I don't mind going right off the horse into that area of negative shape. And so in other words, I can go everywhere with this color because I'm only using one color. So, you know, it's not like when, when I was little and I, and I would be like, oh, I want this part red, I want this part green, I want this part blue. I want, the, I want everything red right now. But I'm thinking more about the tone, not about the color. It's not about the color. I just happen to be using red. But I'm, I'm thinking more about the tones that I'm shading in with my red. And I'm following my tonal plan. Okay, so I'm just going to keep working away on this.
Once again, I'm only using one color. And so I don't mind just laying down a super light tone over everything, knowing that I can always darken. And I will, I will darken a lot of these areas. Here's where I have a middle tone, so I'm going to be mindful of that by controlling the pressure that I'm putting on the color pencil. This is part of my negative shape, but same color, because it's not about the color right now, it's about the tone. Now it's time for me to build color complexity and darken the tones by adding a darker version of red. So how about instead of just pressing harder with my crimson, I, I actually use a darker version of red. So I'm going to use this Tuscan Red. Now, you might not be able to do this with every color because maybe you're using a color that doesn't have like, kind of like a sister color or a color that's similar to it. Like Tuscan Red, it's still red in other words. It's just that it has some brown in it, almost has a like a violet appearance and I guess it also depends on like the pack of colored pencils you're using like I'm fortunate to have this 36 pack of Prismacolor that's these ones here and so yeah there's lots of nice variations of colors okay so I'm still referring to my tonal plan especially now because you know, maybe I want to start emphasizing some of these middle tones. In my tonal plan, these dark tones were added as shapes. So I'm going to keep them that way. I'm thinking of them as shapes. With the colored pencil, I can really maintain the expressive contours that I took the time to draw. So I encourage you to do that when you're using the colored pencil. Don't go too fast. Maintain those nice expressive contours.
Now where I know the tone needs to stay light, I'm not going to use this Tuscan Red because I need to preserve those light tones. So that one layer of really light crimson red, that's good enough for me. I don't want to go any darker. What I would want to do at this point is continue in this method with the whole drawing. And what's happening here is that I've established the really light tones. I've established the middle tones and the beginning of the dark tones. So I've shaded all those super dark tone shapes in. But I haven't taken them maybe to the point where like they're as dark as they're going to be in the end. I don't want to quite do that yet because now it's time to introduce another color. During our Repetition and Rhythm project, we've been referencing the artwork of Michael Carson. And I told you that we're going to approach the color scheme systematically. It would have worked better with paint, but I think we can try it with the color pencil. I'll show you what I mean. So my plan was to say to you to choose two complementary colors. Complementary colors are colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. So I've been using a lot of red in, these, in this demonstration, so I'm going to stick with red. The complementary color of red is green. Okay. So red would be my, say my main color, and I've already started with red. Right, laying in the tones all with one color. Now, my second color would be green. But what I was going to have you do with the with the pastel. Sorry, I think I said paint. We were going to use pastel. <laughs> sorry, I guess paint's on my mind because the Michael Carson reference references are paintings. So what I was going to say, I thought we would do this. We, I, I will use the complementary color of red, which is green, but I want my green to be a low intensity green. So I don't want it to be just like a regular green. So how do you lower the intensity of a color? Let's zoom in a little bit. Well, by mixing another color into it. So if I take this green here, I can change its intensity by mixing in another color. Now one of the colors that I can mix in, of course, is the complementary color, red. Well, I already have a bunch of red on my artwork, so if I lay green on top, well that's, that already changes the intensity of this green. But I want to add a little bit more complexity and interest to my artwork. So I'm thinking, mm, I think I'll actually use this goldenrod and this light umber. And I'm going to mix both of these. Excuse the sharpening. I'm going to mix both of these 
into the green. Ooh, yeah, I really like that light umber. It's making the green a little bit more earthy. I'll be really careful with this golden rod. I do like that though, it kind of warms it up a little bit. Now, I'm going to use the sandwich approach where I go back on top now with my initial green because I still want it, I still want this, this hue to be green but I'm lowering the intensity of it. Now you know what I should have done here, I actually should have, I should have done this. I'll zoom out a little. I should be working on top of red because I have red everywhere, right? So like in step one, you are going to use only one color and put in all your tones, or the beginning of the tones anyway. Okay, so I've got three colors in my hand here. So I start with the green, because that's the complementary color of red. But I'm not just using green, I'm changing the intensity of it which I just did because I laid it on top of red, but I'm going to change the intensity even more by adding some of this light umber. Remember, the intensity is the, the purity of a color. Now I'm going to lay some of this golden rod on top. Now that's not very green anymore, so I'm going to go back on top with the green. So that's the system that I want you to use. So you start with your, your one color, your main color. Then you, you might have to like Google a color wheel. Find your color's complement. And by the way, tertiary colors have complementary colors too. So like for instance, if this was your main color, <laughs> this one's called mulberry. But what is it really? It's actually like a red violet. So red violet has a complementary color. The complementary color of red violet is the color right across from it on the color wheel, yellow green. Okay, so then you'd have to go in your pack of color pencils and find a yellow green. Now, if you're not fortunate to have like a, a wide range of colored pencils, like in this kit, look at this. Not only does it have, what's it called? Spring green, but it also has this one. Chartreuse. If you don't have greens like that, well, just use green and yellow and mix them together to make a yellow green. So that's if your, your main color is a tertiary color. Step one was to use one color and add it to the entire artwork following my tonal plan and focusing mainly on those really dark tones and middle tones, but also adding the color in the light tone areas too, but barely pressing on the color pencil so that I'm maintaining or preserving a really, really light tone. So it's not a matter of, oh, I want this part red, this part green, this part violet, this part brown. It's that I'm thinking of tone mainly and the color is kind of insignificant. But now I want to switch colors. I'm going to use the system where I consult the color wheel, I find my main color, red, and I ask myself what's the complementary color of red? The complementary color of red is the color right across from it on the color wheel. It's green. So I'm going to use green as my next color. However, to add some visual complexity, and to make this artwork unique, I'm not just going to use green. I'm going to use a low intensity green. Intensity is another property of color. It refers to the purity of a color. So I'm going to take this green, but I'm going to change the intensity of it by adding red to it. Wait a minute. I already have red on the paper. Oh, okay. Good. So if I just add green on top, already I'm, in ch I'm changing the intensity of the green. The other thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to go to my pack of color pencils and I'm going to find some other pencils that I could add into the green to change the, the intensity even more. And I chose these two colors, light umber and golden rod. So let's say I want this chunk of negative shape to actually be green. Okay, so I'm going to start laying in my green, but I need to maintain this tone. And so already 
I'm pretty dark here. Like, no, nah, I think I actually went a little bit too dark, honestly, with my red in this area because according to my tonal plan, it's not supposed to be that dark. I want to be really careful along positive shapes because I want to maintain the expressive contours that I've drawn in. And so the color pencil is wonderful for that, of course, because I can keep it nice and sharp and I can be really careful and precise with those contours. So I'm laying down my green and it's already a low intensity green because it's going on top of red. But as I said, I'm going to do what a painter would do. I'm going to layer colors and I am going to also lay down some of the light umber and the goldenrod. So that's going to look like this. Maybe I'll do the goldenrod first. So just a little bit of the goldenrod. Still being careful as I shade along my positive shape. And then also with the light umber. Now I want to keep in mind like the sandwich approach. So if I kind of lose the greenness of this section, then I'll just go back over with some green and bring that greenness back. Now, I won't do that on the horse because I don't want any green on this particular horse, but maybe I want green on this horse. And so I'm going to add green to this horse. And already, again, it's low intensity. I'm going to go into the, the light tones too. Okay, but then I'm going to add those other two colors to the green too, the golden rod. and the light umber, especially on the horse. Maybe I'll be especially bold with the light umber in the middle tone areas on the horse. And I know that these dark, really dark tone areas are gonna get even darker. Like they're gonna be pretty dark when this is all over and done with. So I will be using some black. Now I'm going in with the golden rod. So you see, I mean, this is where we're not really just using two colors because I'm asking you to change the intensity of your second color by mixing other colors into it. And so, you know, you can be a little bit more aggressive with them if you want, if you want to, like now I can, I can kind of see a hint of this golden rod here, that orange, but that's okay. Like I'll leave that for now. If I don't like it later, I can take it out by covering it up. Can't really take it out. Literally, but I can cover it up is what I mean. Get a little bit more green on here. Okay, so painting, thinking of maintaining my tones, but now I'm thinking a little bit more about like, color, intensity. Just have to be careful to preserve my light tones because already I can see that I, I lost a few. I'm looking... Here in the horse's mane, there's some nice light tone shapes that I lost. I didn't shade around them. So I might have to try something like <clears throat> taking an eraser. And you know what works really well for this is the eraser on the back of a pencil. And I can erase shapes back in.
spot. Uh, see, it's kind of working, but not really. <laughs> so, yeah, just a word of warning. Just be really careful to preserve your light tones because it's really difficult to erase colored pencil once the paper becomes that saturated. What if you want to have part of your artwork show a more concentrated hue of your second color, of your complementary color? So red is my main color. But maybe I want this horse down here to just be a bit more bolder with the green. So then even though this part of the horse is a super dark tone, I am holding off on going too dark with the red when I add the tone slash color, when I add the color to this part of the horse. Because I know that I want it to be primarily green. I want it to have a real green appearance. So I am adding the red, but I'm not pressing that hard, even though it is a really dark tone. That will enable me to be a little bit more aggressive with the green. And so that in the end, it's the green that will really show up or be dominant. So now I'm gonna already go in with my green. And I know that this shape is a dark tone. So I can be pretty aggressive with the green. I haven't used black yet. I'm just varying the pressure that I'm putting on my pencil to create my darker tone. Sometimes you have to switch back and forth. Because you see, I don't want the green to go right on the white of the paper. I want, I want there to be a layer of red first because I'm relying on the underlayer of red not only to create unity so that there's that hint of red everywhere but I need that underlayer of red to lower the intensity of the green because remember they're complementary colors so when they get layered the intensity of both colors really is lowered. To help emphasize the lower intensity green, I am also using those other colors that I said I would use to do that. Light umber and the chartreuse. Layering, painting, blending. Sometimes you'll be working on one part of your artwork and the underside of your hand is resting on and rubbing on another part of the artwork and smudging it. And so it's useful to just take a piece of scrap paper and lay it on that part of your artwork that your hand is resting on to keep any unwanted smudges from appearing. Colored pencils, I've been saying, are drawing tools. But we're using them to paint, but they're still drawing tools, meaning we can make lines with them. So, we should do that in this artwork. We should use line as a means to add a yet another visual element to, to our artwork, to add complexity and interest and also to help define some of those expressive contours. But let's not just use line like we're used to using line. Let's make the line vary in width and tone by 
changing the pressure that we put on the drawing tool all within the same continual line which is what I'm doing as I'm talking so watch let me zoom in a little bit more light to dark <laughs> sometimes that happens okay switch colors light to dark to light again I'm <laughs> trying not to press too hard light to dark to light again so I'm just changing the pressure but it's all within one continual line and see what happens is that the line when, it, when I'm not pressing as hard the line is thinner I press harder and the line not only gets wider but darker too so we end up with two qualities of line changing okay so in my artwork maybe I'm working on this horse's head and I'm darkening these tones and I have darkened this tone right here of that horse which is behind this horse so it's looking pretty good but then I think that'd be nice if this line all of a sudden started to become a little bit more predominant but I'm using varied line weight I call it maybe I'll switch to my Tuscan red now keep going and then like I can outline this whole head but not with a continual line it's, it's broken and it changes the, the width varies maybe this ear would be a nice line to show also that one's a little bit wider okay so I don't want to overdo it and what I'm going to do in this case is then I'm going to make this line meet this shape but make the, the shape have the same tone as the line so I'm going to darken this and then yeah that's pretty black so just give it a little boost of red okay so another place that I was just working is down here on this leg so look that's a nice place to have some line but I want to vary the width I'm going to make this uh, these hooves pretty dark but then maybe put a little line in right there and then up I'm doing it with the black I can also switch to a dark green right there I'm going to have the line change width okay so feel free to use some outlining but strategic don't overdo it rely also on tonal contrast to define edges but if you are going to use line use it in a really mature way advanced way and vary the weight which also in turn varies the width how about this line light harder light again light 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 more pressure more pressure ease off boom Depending on the complementary colors you're, you're using, you might find that when you get to a point where you're working with such dark tones already, using a dark complementary color can actually darken the tone near as much as a black could, but the benefit is that the dark tone now has much more depth and character. Because black is such a flat color, black absorbs light, it doesn't reflect light. So in this case I'm using this dark green so green is my complementary color to red <clears throat> and luckily my pack of color pencils has a dark dark forest green and so I really like how that's looking <clears throat> excuse me instead of or in comparison to the black I like the what I'm what I'm getting from this green I don't want to go too much with too strong with the black maybe in some parts of the artwork I will but over here I like how this green is looking so see if you've got that option and again it depends on your colors for instance if you're using orange and blue is your complementary color well certainly you probably have a nice 
dark blue and navy. Maybe you're using like yellow and uh, or like maybe you're using a tertiary color like yellow orange and then the complementary color of yellow orange is what is it? Double check. Yellow orange, mm, blue violet. That is a great color to use as a darkening color. When you're working on the dark tones of your animal, try not to fill them in consistently. So here I'm working on some of these dark tones around the horse's mane, but I don't want to just make the whole shape the same darkness. I want to create some variation. So you just have to pick and choose where you establish your super, super dark tones and where you maybe leave more of a middle tone. So in other words, don't forget about the middle tones. If you want to add even more visual complexity to your artwork, consider using different versions of your complementary color. So I've been using this olive green and this dark green a lot, along with my red, but now I'm going to switch to this true green and just add a tiny bit here on this part of the horse <clears throat> where there's nothing else really happening. So just for a little bit of variation, but don't overdo it. Just a little bit. We don't want to evenly distribute all the colors. We want variety. There's a beautiful contour that runs down the neck and into the flank of the horse and down its leg. Horses have such beautifully shaped legs. I'm resisting the urge to make a line there though because I've already used quite a bit of line and in fact I love the look of contour drawings so some of my lines are actually doubled. It's like two lines side by side. But I'm resisting the urge to make a line here because I don't want to overdo it. So instead what I'm doing is I'm going to lay in like a, a middle tone all along the edge of this leg and as long as I keep this leg, it, the leg itself light, keep that tone light, then I shouldn't need an outline down that contour of the horse. So again, I'm trying to not overdo the line. I don't want to get too carried away. Maybe I'll change my mind later, but for now, it's starting, the, the contour of this leg is starting to show nicely. I think I'll switch to one of my low intensity, low intensifying colors. So this is that light umber. Now, by the way, speaking of these colors, they can be used to add texture. So in my tonal plan, I really liked the texture that I was, that I was able to achieve with the graphite in this section of my negative shape. Here on my colored version, I don't really have that. So maybe if I go in with this color, eh, it's not really showing up. So what could I do? Well, maybe I need to find like a darker, neutral color so maybe like a charcoal gray so here's a this is called cool gray so if i go in with this cool gray maybe i can create a bit of texture with this so i don't really want to introduce another color in other words but a gray is sort of a freebie i've kind of gone a little bit too dark in this section overall compared to what i had planned in my tonal plan so that's a bit of a boo-boo and with colored pencil, there's no, no turning back now, really. Kind of committed to that. But I, I was able to achieve a little bit of that texture, so I don't want to overdo it, because as I'm adding this gray, I am changing the tone, and that, that area is not supposed to be too dark.
As I'm coming down the home stretch with my artwork here, I'm thinking about the overall unity. So I added some lines with varied weight in the negative shape since I have some on and around the horses. I wanted to include some in the negative shape. So when we treat the positive and negative shape in similar ways, that helps to create unity. Another thing you might want to do is introduce like a, an oddball color that doesn't really go with your color scheme, but in a really subtle way, just a little bit. So for instance, I've got, what about this light aqua? Now where could I integrate this where it won't seem too odd but it'll just give the the artwork that little bit of variation or like that I guess that exaggerated variation so I think he, um, on one of the horses so maybe here just this tiniest amount right there and that's it just in one spot one spot only tiniest amount so what I would probably do at this point is leave this for a while walk away from it come back to it later maybe another day sometimes it's good to do that with your artwork But now I'm interested in, interested in what I can do with the marker. So let's move on to that.